Welcome to Casablanca. <laughs> Come on in. <laughs> and I have been in Casablanca for a week now and we actually have not left this Airbnb except to get food. We've been having a much needed break from traveling to catch up on all of our work duties. So we thought we would start off today's vlog in Casablanca with a tour of our Airbnb to show you what you can get for about $100 a night in Casablanca. And quick disclaimer, we're not actually in the center or the heart of Casablanca. We are a little bit further out, which is not too bad. There's a quick tram ride into the center and we'll show you how to do that afterwards. All right, let's start with the main living area. It is actually a really beautiful apartment. We're really happy with what they've given us. There's ups and downs to it. As you can imagine, the internet is not that great, but we haven't really had good internet the whole time we've been in Morocco. So I guess maybe that's just what it is like here. We have a huge lounge room with a big sitting area. And the best part is it opens out onto the veranda. We love this big outdoor space. It has shelter and privacy screens, which actually makes this area feel very, very private. And we've spent a lot of time out here during our week. And it's just also nice having this kind of flow of like going from inside to outside as much as we want. And the temperature has been really beautiful that we can just have the doors open and we don't have to have the air corner. And that leads us into the kitchen. Because we've been here all week, we definitely needed the kitchen and it's gotten a lot of use. It has an oven, a stove top, all the cooking utensils you need and a washing machine, which is something we desperately needed. <laughs> and then we have the bathroom, basic bathroom, shower, toilet, sink, not really too much to be excited about. And the bedroom. This is actually such a comfortable bed. We are really happy with this bed and the pillows <laughs> because we've had some pretty shocking beds um, and pillow situations in Morocco. This one definitely met our expectations in regards to the space and the comfiness. It has aircon in the room so we can turn that on at night so that we can shut the door and not have all the sounds from the street. And yeah, that's pretty much it. There's one more thing we want to show you though. The best part of this apartment, because we've been here all week, is that we have access to this rooftop pool, which has been very refreshing, especially in this hot Moroccan weather. I really should have brought sunglasses up here though. I should know better by now. Now, the water is actually very cold in this pool, like freezing, which is surprising, but it's very refreshing. And the other odd thing about this pool is it's only waist deep throughout the entire pool, but... And there's no way to get in. And there's no way, there's no like stairs or anything. So you just kind of jump in and jump out. But I mean, it's only waist deep, so it's not really an issue. But yeah, it's been really refreshing coming up here of an afternoon and cooling off and taking a little break from work. And it's quite a nice space to just chill. So that was the tour of the flat. And now we're gonna head into the city, which you can actually see over there, those buildings there. There's a tram that goes right along. So let's go and, let's go and discover how it is to travel by tram in Casablanca. Yeah, so we're gonna go check out what Casablanca is like. We've already been to Marrakesh and Fez and they were really different experiences for us. So it'll be really interesting to see what kind of like the third biggest city in Casablanca is really like. Okay, so can we use this for both of us? Let's go ask. Oh, the tram's here. Oh. Ah, we missed it. Ah, we missed it. There okay. we go. First failure of the day. <laughs> Sir, uh, we bought two trips. Can we use one too? No. What are we two? One. Okay, so he ate this by one. Uh -huh. Merci. So, it's one ticket per person. I'm 
the tram was good, it was clean, it was not too crowded, it's just a sweaty, hot. a bit hot, but I mean, it is Morocco. But still, they have a tram, so that's a good thing. I'm sure a lot of taxis aren't happy about this, but... And it was seven dirham for one trip, which translates to about one dollar. Okay, so we're standing right in front of the souk entrance. We, the plan is basically to go see the mosque. Uh, what's the name? I'll write it down. The number one thing to see in Casablanca, yeah. according to every blog and every blog. Yeah, it's quite the sight, so we're gonna go to it. And we specifically stopped at that tram so that we can cross through the old so called Medina to get to it. so far well you have definitely exited the market area somehow but it was a lot more chill than yeah. marrakesh I, like there was way less people pulling you out yeah so so far it's a bit more chill but but it was and way more spacious than the fez medina but so far fez is still number one for me It definitely feels more modern here than uh, Marrakesh and Fez. I don't know if modern is the right word. Walking through the Medina or the Souk of Casablanca, it definitely wasn't as impressive or authentic as what the Fez one was or even the Marrakesh one. So definitely Casablanca is not winning on that front. But once we made it through to the ocean, we've come across the mosque that we don't know the name of still. And it is so much bigger than what we expected. The scale is just huge, way bigger than anything we've seen in Morocco whatsoever. So it's actually quite impressive. So one of the cool things about this mosque is that it's one of the only mosques in Morocco that you can actually get into as a non-Muslim person. You do have to join a guided tour, but I think they're pretty regular. So we'll go find out if we can actually go inside. It's one of the most beautiful, no, it is the most beautiful mosque that we've seen since we've been in Morocco and uh, one of the most beautiful we've seen since we've started our travels. Yeah. We haven't gone to the Middle East yet, but so far it's definitely the most impressive we've seen. Um, and uh, it is the biggest one in Africa, so we can see like it's really big. We didn't realize it from the photos, but you, yeah. get, you, you realize when you see it how big this thing is. The photos and cameras and whatnot, they don't really do it justice. Like it's massive and it's so detailed. There's so many different little detailed carvings into the stone and mosaics everywhere. Apparently it took 25,000 skilled tradesmen to actually build this mosque. And one of the epic things about it is actually built over the water. So it's not just built on the land. And they did that because um, I guess in the Muslim religion, it has something to do with God being um, above the water or something like that. So they wanted to represent that in a way. But yeah, very beautiful. We're gonna see, we're walking towards an entrance. We're gonna see if we can actually get in. So 
we're not sure exactly which one happened, but we went up to the entrance and I got pushed aside and a bunch of women weren't allowed in. So I'm assuming we're not allowed into that section or just women aren't allowed into that section. Or it's just because he knew we weren't Muslim, <laughs> we were not allowed in, um, which is definitely a thing. So yeah, I don't really know how to get it. I mean, we definitely got to see more than any other mosque in the whole of Morocco so far. Yeah. So grateful for that. And yeah. there was a very, like it was very cool, like cold in cold there. Air, yeah. yeah, it felt like it was so comfortable in there. Yeah, it was quite dark in there as well. They did have some big, beautiful chandeliers, but definitely it was really dark. And I don't know if we would have been able to capture that much on camera. But the outside is probably the most beautiful. The inside is definitely epic from what we could see as well. Um, but we don't know where to go to get in, so we're probably gonna skip this one and go get cold drink cold drink and some food uh, so i ordered a chicken sandwich and it came with what we call plastic cheese i don't know what it's called everyone everywhere else but it's that you know those squares that are wrapped in plastic um but it looks okay apart from that um, and they did advertise wood pie pizza so on pizza it's no tagine no couscous but <laughs> we're taking a break from that we'll get a tagine later or tomorrow watch out for in Morocco or not get caught by is that the menu that they have out the front can often be a different price to the menu when you sit down. A lot of uh, um, restaurants will just tell you oh it's an old menu it hasn't been updated but we've also read on blogs and been told that it is kind of like a bit of a scam that they do here. Well you know. an extra like maybe 30 dirham overall which is a lot of money because some of those places that's a full dish. Yeah. But yeah like we saw the menu when we sat down and we agreed to pay those prices once we ordered so we're happy with that but definitely there's other stories where they'll actually charge you a different price and then when you ask for the menu to show them they'll bring you a different more expensive menu anyway not complaining just letting you guys know that that is something to keep your eye on when you are visiting morocco we are gonna go check out a garden We've done some Googling and honestly, we're not finding that much to see and do here. So we're gonna go for a walk through the streets of Casablanca and see if we can find this garden. And also hopefully just come across something else cool along the way that makes us, you know, wanna fall in love with this city. I kind of wish we'd gotten a takeaway lunch here. It's really nice. It's very cool, the weather now. And there's fountains and water features, and beautiful trees. What are you doing? Max has lost it. He's got no energy left. He's ready to go to bed, I, I think. I walked two kilometers. <laughs> They've created these really cool tree alleys in the park and there's like multiple different ones, but they're really nice. Okay, and there was an idea that those trees here would basically be a high blockage to the main alley, which is like the French garden, they say, so that, you know, you could have some um, tranquility and some so it feels like you've left the city even yeah. when you haven't. So there's like an, a line that showcases the view, this eyesight view, and those big trees are blocking the, the city. And then when you're in the main alley, you can basically just feel like you're in your own little oasis. So that, <laughs> that wraps up our time in Morocco. Anyway, tomorrow we are off to Fez on a very long travel to our next destination. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Bye.
the city is still the original Medina. 